Welcome to the Ringer YouTube movie channel. This is Chris Ryan. Isn't well, it's it? called Ringer Movies, Chris. You don't, let's just keep going. Keep flowing, This man. is the Ringer this Movies is channel, and I'm here to talk to you about a trailer that I just saw. It's 28 years later, 2025's most anticipated film for me, Chris Ryan. <laughs> for Sean Fennessy, who knows? Maybe it's the PTA film that we haven't seen hide or hair of. The, the Battle of Bacton Cross. But for me, it's Danny Boyle's 28 Years Later. One of the most formative experiences I can remember is going to see 28 Days Later when I was a kid, younger mm -hmm. man. Yeah. And just being like, wow, you can do anything. You can make a movie. You can make a big genre movie in any way. They like shot London at dawn to make it look deserted all the time. It's amazing. I thought 28 uh, Weeks Later was pretty cool, right? Very good thriller. Uh, I never really thought they would return to this. They are apparently returning to this. Danny Boyle and Alex Garland for a trilogy of films set in the future of this franchise. This one stars Aaron Taylor Johnson, Jodie Comer, Ray Fiennes, who looks menacing AF in this trailer. And I will declare this trailer the best trailer I have seen since Dunkirk. Whoa! Wait, you didn't even set me up for anything. You were just like, <laughs> I'm, I am pressing the button and we are exploding the takery. Uh, I'm, it's hard to not be excited by this. I think part of the reason why it looks so great is, one, it's a franchise that has not been overheated, yeah. right? Like, we've only had two of these movies. These movies are not available to watch digitally right now. Oh. And so they don't have a big streaming life. And so it f they feel fresh. Yeah. It feels like a good time to come back to them. You've got the core team in place. You mentioned Garland and Boyle. You've also got Anthony Dodd-Mantle, the mm -hmm. cinematographer who's been working with Boyle for many years. This film was shot on an iPhone. How do you feel about that? But it looks phenomenal. Now, they did use... Proper like a film lenses. $30 million rig for an yeah. iPhone. Yeah. So it's not, this is not tan Sean Baker's Tangerine or anything like that, but um, God, it looks damn good. It seems like a good time to come back durationally for where the story was. Yes. You know, this was once the, the space for Killian Murphy to cook, and now we've got a new generation of characters, or do we? Don't know if Killian Murphy will be back. Yeah, for he this does moment. not appear in the trailer. Uh, earmuffs, there have been on-set photos of Killian Murphy. Could that be a flashback? I don't know like, like, what, how they're going to use him. Jodie Comer, I think, plays a major role in this film, is only seen very briefly in the trailer. It's mostly Aaron Taylor Johnson and some incredibly terrifying shots of Ray Fiennes. There seems to be a monster of some sort. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we got a little Frankenstein action going with the, the zombies. But the thing I wanted to ask you is why now for this? Like, why is this hitting now? Mm -hmm. Here's my theory. Okay. Walking Dead is kind of come and gone mm -hmm. in the time period that this has happened. There are actually some choices that this trailer makes that look very Walking Dead, that kind of like what would happen if technology stopped moving forward. So people are using bows and arrows and like making their own clothes and stuff like that. There is that dirty, scraggly feel to the characters that they would obviously be going through if a lot of modern conveniences went away. But I think for this film, is it too simple to say like, Walking Dead kind of fills the vacuum after 28 eight weeks later comes mm -hmm. out. It's not like a global phenomenon, but I think people really do like zombie films and like zombie yeah. world films. And can there only be one really meaningful one at a time? Well, I just it just feels like if this had come out midstream mm -hmm. for Walking Dead and it had been 17 years later or whatever, I wonder if people would have felt a little bit like I'm getting this from every angle right now. And it just happens to have slotted in right at a time when there just isn't a story like this on TV or or in films. There is not like a long-running zombie franchise, if I'm remembering correctly, at least not the one that I'm, to my knowledge, like World War Z could have been that. It wasn't my beloved World mm -hmm. War Z. What do you think? Well, I think the timing is very good. I think there it's possible that there is a, a trick of the light happening with this trailer, which is that most trailers that we find now for big franchise films that are about weighty material are often soundtracked by slowed down pop songs. The music that is used in this trailer is highly unusual. It is the recitation of a 1903 Rudyard Kipling poem mm -hmm. about men in a military regiment stomping their way to hell. And the way that it is performed and cut against the images in the movie is just remarkable. The trailer itself is a work of mainstream Hollywood art. Yeah. It is awesome. And so... I don't know if this movie is going to be good, but Insider Sean has some information to oh, share with you. Yes. Which is that a friend of mine who works in this industry. Shoe leather Sean. Um, who, may or, who did in fact read the script, said this is the best script that he has read in five years. 
<laughs> now, obviously, Alex Garland has been focusing on writing and directing. Yes. This is the first time he has done a four higher screenplay and the first time he's written a movie for Danny Boyle. Now, they not, didn't just do these movies. They also did uh, Sunshine Together, which is a wonderful movie, and Boyle adapted Garland's novel, The Beach. Mm-hmm. So they have a long working history. Boyle gets Garland more than anybody other than Garland. Well, he gives Garland the weird liveliness that maybe Garland as a director sometimes lacks. Yes. And so take that best script in five years information as you will. You know, some people may agree to disagree on that one, but that is the thing that has me the most excited is hearing that. And maybe we'll have you excited by hearing me say that out loud. I would also just say that this being a planned trilogy but not a planned trilogy because it's wicked and the songs have to be included or something, but they actually may have a story. This is actually a wicked sequel. (laughs) This is wicked. This is wicked three. Yeah. (laughs) Wicked 28 years later. Ray Fiennes plays Elphaba in Uh, this film. Yeah. I wonder, I I am, am very excited. I know that you've started to feel a little bit drained by the part oneness of, of certain films and feeling like you're not getting a complete statement. But I would imagine with the caliber of these filmmakers that we will not be disappointed. And the the word on that script is 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 incredibly Yeah, it depends on what the movie is. I think um Boyle is incredibly inventive. He has done a legacy sequel before. He did do train spotting too. Yeah, which um, is great. He's been he's gone back to this well and and he's done it deftly and creatively and in ways that hopefully feel like he's not repeating himself. So I I have faith in the team behind this movie. I think part of it is, as I said, like the the design of this movie just looks cool. It yeah. is obviously like at a greater scale than those first two movies, which are really nitty gritty on the ground mm-hmm. movies. And this seems like a much more epic story. There's a sequence in the trailer where we see some of the characters entering this sort of like skull forest. Yeah. And we briefly see yeah. Ray Fiennes sort of <laughs> covered in blood yeah. making traversing his way into the skull forest. That was forest. one hell of a conclave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, so if that is the, in yeah. fact the Monsignor who, having survived that maybe this is yeah. the Conclave sequel we've all Trembley been waiting for had a bad day at the office <laughs> if that's what he had to say um, Rudyard Kip- Kipling yeah Rudyard Kipling overrated yeah. underrated or properly rated <laughs> I think I, pro- properly <laughs> yeah I, I, safe to say okay what, do, what about you uh, I ju- I was just I recently watched The Man Who Would Be King again mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. which is wonderful and it's based okay. on one Kipling, of his, yeah. his works uh, but I have not read a ton of his actual poetry Mm -hmm. but this is fantastic um i will be very interested to see if they can keep their hand on the leash with the marketing of this film it's notable that we are in december this film's coming out next summer can we avoid doing four trailers that give away the entire film i don't know please 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 you guys have a perfect thing here well they're not going to not do anything else don't stop talking about this movie (laughs) we're literally making shoulder content about the movie (laughs) Um, yeah June right now 2025 here are the films that are coming out in the month of June uh, John Wick presents colon ballerina yeah I may, they may have changed the title of that to just the ballerina I think it's from the world of John Wick colon the that just rolls ballerina. off the tongue yeah not yeah. the most elegant title and then you've got on June 13th you've got Elio which is the new Pixar film okay and then you on June 13th you also have a little bit of counter programming in How to Train Your Dragon which is a live action adaptation of an animated film okay Oh, they're making a live action? They got real dragons? They got real dragons. Yeah, they got those guys from Khaleesi, and uh, they brought okay. them in. Then then on the 20th of June, we get 28 years later. And then on June 27th, we have F1. And that's going into theaters. It's going into IMAX and stuff. As far as we know, unless they pull a wolf's on us. Okay. That would be incredibly funny if they spent like half a billion dollars <laughs> and shot at F1 races for five years and they were like, next to shrinking. Yeah. And yeah. Ted Lasso season three. And Danny Boyle used a literal iPhone <laughs> yeah. to make a movie that hit 3,500 screens. That would be wonderful poetry. Yeah. On the on the order of Rudyard Kipling. Uh, is this one of the most anticipated movies of the summer then? I think so. As of now? Yeah. I mean, it's it's Mission Impossible, The Final Reckoning. It's There's a new Jurassic World movie. There's an original Trey Parker and Matt Stone movie that Ooh. is a collaboration with Kendrick Lamar that I'm incredibly excited oh for. God. I don't know really anything else about it, but that's something, you know, Trey, Trey and Matt haven't made a movie in a really long time. Um, yeah. I mean, Superman? Have you heard of it? Yeah. I'm excited for that. Yeah. I, think, I think it'll be a fun summer at the movies. You know, obviously, we're still in a realm where, like, everything is going to be a sequel or a franchise extension in some way, but... Creative people do, getting involved in them and, and in, in creative ways, like I'm, I'm excited and and honestly, like Boyle gives me a similar charge as Nolan does, where I feel like he's using technology in really interesting ways to tell stories in really fascinating ways. I don't think he would have 
felt compelled to return to this. This was not such highly sought after IP that he would be like, yeah, we just have to keep the brand alive. Like he obviously has something else he wants to say. For Sean, I'm Chris. 28 years later, the trailer, it rocks. Can't wait to see the movie.